What's happening, my fellow geeks and geekheads? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. And today, we're kicking it old school. We're going to be pimping out a Batman figure from Kmart. This is the Batman Adventures Armored Accessory Batman Action Figure from... Who the fuck made this guy? Spin Master. Never heard of them. But there's the packaging. So I've had this guy literally sitting behind me for about three months now. And it's one of those things where when the creativity comes to me, when I get an idea of what I want to do with this guy, I'm going to pimp him out, customize him. Again, kicking it old school. I love doing these types of figures because the detail is there. It's just the paint job is always lacking. But for a figure that overall costs 30 Australian dollars, it's exactly what you'd expect. But we've got some accessories. We have some Dark Knight Returns-esque armor accessories that we're going to be utilizing. So the idea in terms of the theme of the overall final look and the aesthetic and, and the base is the Dark Knight Returns from Frank Miller. So armored, heavy, rotted, oiled, rusty kind of look with some rubble and holding a shredded Superman cape. So this actually looks pretty good once he's all armored up. The figure itself as a base looks really weird and really lanky, but he is not going to look anything like this by the end. So again, I do want to utilize a nice little rubble-esque base, something very reminiscent of the Dark Knight Returns. Now, I actually have been working on another custom collectible, the Hot Toys Nightmare Batman. I'm pretty much 90% done in terms of the filming and working on the figure and the base itself, but I got a brand new custom head sculpt that I'm having painted in the United States. It's one of those things where one six scale, I'd rather have a professional do it who does this on a daily basis because the rest of the figure looks brilliant. Knowing me, I'd fuck up the eyes and he'd end up looking like this. So I gotta wait for that to come back from the States and then I can call it a day on that video, wrap it up, do all the final shots and the reveal footage and stuff like that and do the final edit. But in the meantime, we're gonna work on this guy. I'm finally ready to give him a crack. Again, some beautiful base parts here, like great detail. Okay. Okay. So again, we're going for the Dark Knight Returns, but I am very confused. Is this a drone? They gave Batman a drone. Or is this like some sort of vent thing? Because if this is a drone, this is the age we live in now. What the fuck? So what I'm thinking for the base color, even though a lot of this is going to be covered up by the armor pieces. So for the armor pieces in general, we're going to be going for like the mech suit look from BVS. But for the base suit, the base bat suit, I'm thinking of doing a gray wash, not even a gray wash, just gray paint over the entire piece and scouring away the excess to leave all the gray parts in the indents of the suit. Just something a bit different. Now for the boots, I'm going to muddy them up once the armor pieces are on, so it kind of complements the, the, the rustic look and also just makes sense that the boots will be muddy. The figure does indeed come with a cape, but... We're not going to be using that. I'm going to be using something very reminiscent of the mech suit from BVS. Just kind of that, that canvasy, almost denim looking gray cloth that has been shredded as well. Going to be obviously redoing the mouth plate, make it a bit more hyper realistic, even a bit of blood coming out. Just something really gnarly, all mounted on a rock formation base, utilizing some pieces from Bunnings Warehouse. Again, trying to keep it as cheap as possible, but effective at the same time. So first things first, we're gonna work on the base suit and then get to all the armor pieces. So with that being said, let's get to it. <laughs> you know it's time for some shitty commentary. So like I said, we're gonna cover this entire figure with a heavy body Liquitex neutral gray. Now, I find this stage very cathartic and just almost like you're going zen because you're getting in all those beautiful details and there is no right or wrong with this stage. You just have to cover the entire figure Minus the cowl. It was my creative choice to not cover the cowl. I'm going to do that a little bit separate. Let the whole thing dry, and then we're going to grab a scourer sponge. But this time, I cut it up into little pieces because there are some little uh, nooks and crannies that you definitely need a smaller piece of scourer sponge to help out with removing the excess. And I think it was a nice kind of little opposite twist. You know, usually we have a gray suit with uh, black detail, black inside detail and stuff like that. Whereas swapping this, I think it works out pretty well and it worked out pretty well. Now there are gonna be times where you get a, a bit of stubborn paint and you can spritz a very light mist of isopropyl alcohol or even some uh, hot water to, to soften and, and loosen up that acrylic paint. But I really liked how this turned out and also just gives it a dusty weathered look to the suit. 
Now that we're all done and dusted with that stage and just letting the entire figure dry, because there are some areas that it, it may get a little bit caked up and that the paint hasn't completely dried yet. I'm gonna cut off that radio receiver. I just didn't care for it. I just didn't want it. And also the cape needs to go there as well. Now I'm also just uh, carving out some holes that the cape is going to indeed slot into and taking off those drop harnesses on the belt. I don't feel a need to, to keep them on and I just want a standard utility belt. Now I'm covering the entire belt with an ivory black from Liquitex, another heavy body acrylic paint, which means you only usually need one coat and there's no real streaking. I did have to do a second coat on the buckle there because the, the yellow was bleeding through. But after uh, just one coat everywhere else, we're good to go. Now I've got some rub and buff and an oil color as well. Now this is gonna be a combo of dry brushing. So we're gonna be dry brushing that oil color onto the pouches. I want them kind of that old school leather looking, old school uh, Dark Knight Returns pouch look. And when it comes to the canisters, I'm gonna be just dry brushing on that silver leaf rub and buff. Now for the buckle, it's just gonna be the gold rub and buff. Now you can seal this up with a sealer, but make sure it's an acrylic base sealer. Now when it comes to the rest of the armor, I'm using a raw sienna acrylic paint. And we're just gonna go full ham like we did with the figure with the neutral gray, and also add a soupçon of brown shoe polish, mix that up and just go to town muddying up all these pieces. Again, this is sort of gonna emulate a bit of subtle rust going on once we dry brush on some silver leaf rub and buff on top of what we're doing now. Now, you definitely can wipe away the excess. You do have to let it sit on the pieces for a bit because it is that type of plastic where the acrylic paint wants to bead away. But the more you build it up and let it sit there, it is going to rest quite nicely and get into all those nooks and crannies and all that beautiful detail. Now I'm just gonna grab some 40 grit sandpaper and sand away where I want there to be pieces of battle damage. So you could easily repeat this step, or sorry, you could actually do this step at the beginning before muddying up and rusting up your pieces. It doesn't really matter. It, 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 either way is totally fine. But obviously we need a bit of we need a bit of battle damage going on here. It is essentially a variation of the mech suit, so it has to look battle damage, especially if we are telling the story of him going up against Superman. And once again, we are gonna grab that silver leaf rub and buff and I love dry brushing. You guys know I love dry brushing and the art of dry brushing is getting as little as possible on your brush and building up that beautiful detail and bringing out that beautiful detail to make it all pop. And it's funny, the silver leaf rub and buff really worked well with the rust effect. It gave this nice texture very reminiscent of the mech suit from Batman v Superman, where there's, there's a lot of interesting textures going on there. There's like a buildup of, of say, leftover water droplets and stuff like that that have been left on the suit. But look at that beautiful detail there. Look at that. It's just popping out. And the base figure itself has some exquisite detail going on right there, even like a hammered look. And like I said, I left the cow completely bare. I didn't do any of the rusting or muddying effects and stuff like that. I just wanted a bit of variation with the cow, just to make it look a little bit different. But overall, I was really thoroughly impressed with how much detail the Robin Buff picked up on this figure, considering it's a Kmart figure. Now I'm gonna seal these pieces up with a matte varnish from Liquitex. Again, if you are gonna be uh, sealing up a figure like this, make sure you use an acrylic one. If you use an enamel one, all the pieces are going to get sticky and that stickiness is just going to get a lot worse. But also with the matte sealer, it brings out more detail in my opinion. Whereas with a gloss, it can kind of get lost in terms of the details. So I'm just gonna put the figure back together, put all the armor pieces on the, the figure and assess where we're at. And I'm really liking where it's uh, going in terms of uh, details and just the overall aesthetic. Now, this is an FX Blue wash from Testers. They no longer make this, but there are plenty of variations out there that you can use. I've had this sitting around for the longest time and it's lasted me a long time. And I just wanted to break up the monotony of the gunmetal gray on the suit and add a bit of blue in there much like the OG look of the Dark Knight Returns mech suit, especially when it comes to like the blue cape, the blue cowl, blue pieces on the armor. And I think it works very well and marries well with the gunmetal gray, because when you apply it, the gunmetal gray bleeds through that blue and they just pair well together, especially when it comes to the strapping. I was gonna do like a leather look, but I figured no, let's go for the blue strapping. And it just is a nice little throwback to the look from the comics and also on the cowl. Certain panels on the cowl, I wanted to have the blue. Again, it just doesn't look boring. You break up the monotony of that gunmetal gray, and it turned out great. 
and just doing some more dry brushing with that oil color on the pouches there on the uh, thigh pouches. Now, when it comes to the cape, this was a pre-existing cape from an old custom collectible of a mech suit. This is essentially like a finer denim canvas uh, material I got from Spotlight. So it measures down to 23 centimeters and then across another 23 centimeters, just so it makes sure it marries up well with the figure. Now it already has been weathered. Um, it was just essentially some 40 grit sandpaper, some spray paint and stuff like that. I could not find this material at Spotlight. So I just figured I'd utilize that one. Whereas this material here was on sale and this is gonna be our Superman cape. Now in terms of the back emblem, I just printed that off and then stuck it on with some, some Gorilla Glue, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now I'm just going in with some more 40 grit sandpaper and really roughing this cape up. I want this cape shredded almost to the point of being burnt, so much so that I actually do incorporate a blowtorch to really singe those areas and those edges. But I also went in with an ivory black oil color to really stain and soil and uh, soot up that cape. So I just went back in with some more 40 grit sandpaper on the Batman cape just to give it that extra bit of frame because what I love about the mech suit is that frayed cape and just how gnarly it looks. So like I said, we're gonna grab our Gorilla Glue contact adhesive and just contact adhere our printed off cape emblem onto the back and that just sticks like shit to a blanket. And again, it's one of those things where you could totally get a, a proper transfer, but I figured it just worked better with printed off paper. So I'm gonna reuse that blue ink, but fed through an airbrush now just for a light mist of blue on the cape. Again, hearkening back to the look from the comics. And it's more of a subtle thing, but once it was done in, in under the certain lighting conditions, it picks up well. And just grabbing some cheap and nasty super glue to adhere that to the armor. So when it comes to painting the mouth plate, we're gonna do some washes using a, a red, a yellow, and a brown. Just some Anko acrylic. This is uh, Anko, the brand you get from Kmart. Cheap as chips. You don't need some high-end acrylics to paint this stuff. Now, when it comes to the washes, I did the red, the yellow, and the brown, and I actually followed the tutorial from Sideshow Collectibles where they had an artist painting up a Superman head, and he did a wash of, of red, of yellow, uh, and blue as well. I forego the blue. I don't feel it's necessary to do the blue, but he did it as well. I highly recommend checking that video out, and I actually will link it down below. Now, when it comes to the lips, I used a hot pearl pink from Testers. This is readily available, and I highly recommend using it for lips on not just smaller scale stuff, but life-size busts. I, I use them on life-size busts. And you can also back it up with a watered down bit of shoe polish. Now, when it comes to the base, we're going for a snow theme. So I've got an MDF display board from Bunnings and some hobby styrene. The difference with hobby styrene as opposed to your, your typical styrene, it's not it really gonna melt away if you spray paint it, and it's a lot more dense and forgiving and not as bubbly. So again, grabbing that 40 grit sandpaper after we've adhered the pieces down, and also a sculpting tool to carve away rock, because we are going for a snow setting. And it's totally subjective when it comes to this stuff. It, it, it's whatever you fancy in terms of how you want it to look. When it comes to the figure, I want the right boot up higher than, than the left boot, but I am gonna grab some PBA craft glue and essentially seal in that foam. And that way, when we spray paint it with a flat gray primer from Rust-Oleum, you don't risk the foam being eaten away. Even though this is a dense hobby foam, if you build up too much spray paint, it can indeed eat away at the foam, but by sealing it up with a PVA or a craft glue, you won't get that uh, eating away of the foam. Now I'm just gonna grab some shoe polish, not watered down, and this is not Kiwi, this is a different brand, and just kind of give it a nice wash to pick up all the detail of our base rock and get a neutral gray and also a titanium white from Liquitex. And then we're gonna start with the neutral gray and dry brush that over and then add a little bit of white just to give it a bit of variation and a bit of texture when it comes to emulating rock, because you look at uh, like, you know, rock formations and stuff like that, there definitely is a lot of layering going on in terms of different colors. And I was pretty happy with how that turned out. And you can do this in a span of like 15 minutes. Now I'm gonna permanently glue the figure down to the base. I'm happy with um, the pose. I'm happy to just lock it in place, grab some more PVA craft glue, but this time add a bit of baby powder in. This is gonna thicken it up and this is gonna emulate thick snow. So Batman is trudging through the snow and it's kind of built up around his boots because of the heaviness. Now this is the snow we're gonna be using. This is a German brand, I believe, and it also comes with a little feeder. So essentially it's like a, a baby powder dispenser for the hobby snow. And I'm gonna mix a little bit in there as well because the snow almost has a glitter effect going on and I kind of want that picked up in this mixture as well. So you can really cake this up, but I really want it to cake around the boots. Just again, to emulate how heavy 
Batman is in that mech suit and we were, he would kind of sink down when he is walking through the snow. Now I'm just going in with undiluted and no baby powdered PVA glue in certain areas where I want the uh, hobby snow to be. And again, you just feed it into this little container and it essentially comes out like baby powder and you can build it up and let it sit there for a while and then blow off the excess with a hairdryer. I'm also then just gonna add a bit of black acrylic for the trimming and we're good for the final reveal. There you go guys, not bad at all for a $30 Kmart toy. Now, I had a lot of fun with this one and the detail on this sculpt is insane, especially when it comes to Batman's actual facial features. Like it's great, really happy with the end result. Love the motif of going for the Dark Knight Returns in the snow and holding Superman's cape with blood. It's just that alternate universe that I would love to see. Now, let's just say you're doing a Nightmare Batman custom collectible and you're swapping out for a, a custom, more accurate head sculpt but you have a Batfleck Hot Toys head lying around. So you get said head. That sounds really wrong. You get the head sculpt and you airbrush it with the same blue that you used on this figure. So you have an option to swap it out from this head sculpt to a Batfleck one. So let's check it out. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This was so much fun to do. It just took me back to the old school days of custom collectibles, getting the ones from Kmart. So it definitely has been a bit of a drought when it comes to decent looking toys that are worthy of a custom collectible. But this one, like I said, has been sitting here for a couple of months. Finally got the creative juices flowing to do something to him. And I absolutely love the end result. With that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well. Hope you're happy. Be very, be silly. And until next time, geeks and geekettes, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.